Tom, because you're an editor, do you think that having a sizzle reel as part of most of the ideas that you come up with has been sort of your core way of getting people attached, or can you just talk about that process? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's it's essential. As, as a matter of fact, at this point, like the the moment I have uh, like a kernel of an idea, I immediately start thinking of what's the sizzle for this. And oftentimes I have the sizzle ready for um, a script long before the script is ever done. As a matter of fact, I have sizzles for scripts that we never finished. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, people reading scripts, everyone will um, imagine it completely differently. I mean, there's people who read Danger One, the same draft, but they didn't picture it as a funny movie. But the movie we made is an action comedy, you know, but that same script could have been made as a very straightforward, serious film. And I'm sure a lot of people um, read it that way. But to be able to then send along a sizzle reel, a three minute short that says, this is the tone. So when you read the script, imagine it like this, you know, and you have actors in there. So they, 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 there's faces that they can put on these characters when they read them. Um, and again, the script could also, the film you make could look a million different ways. You know, it could be, it could look the way Danger One does now, you know, very energetic and vibrant and colorful, or it could have been a lot more grounded and have more of a, you know, a, a documentary isn't the right word, but more of a, yeah, more of a grounded look, you know, very muted. But again, no one knows that until you, and you can describe these things, but then again, you're using words like vibrant can mean a million different things. So it's just best to like, here, just check this out. Give, give this a look. This is what the movie's going to be like. And honestly, I think Danger One, and that's how we got it made, because when um, the, the financiers, what they responded to, yes, was the, the idea, because they were looking for something um, that kind of takes place in one night and like about characters that are starting to deal with a, this big moral dilemma. But they saw the sizzle and their reaction was like, oh, this looks like pain and gain. That's what they said. And that's how, that's, that's, that's what made them pull the trigger. Also, um, it just shows, especially if you haven't done a movie before, it shows that you can shoot something, you know, because um, you're like, you can be like, look, I know I haven't made a movie, but I just did this. And it's a short film. And even if it's a, a, a partial scriptomatic where you're just borrowing some stuff, if you make some of these elements yourself, it just it, it shows that you know how to tell a story. As a matter of fact, even if it's a full scriptomatic and you're just editing stuff together, it also shows that you can tell a story because you knew what you what you needed to look for when you were, you know, assembling these shots. You just didn't shoot them yourself. It just shows that you know a little something about how to put a piece together um, that's not on the page but an actual visual thing. And Danger One is your first feature, mm -hmm. but you've edited so much content that I'm sure it probably, or I'm just assuming, I shouldn't assume, but th that it was fairly easy or no? Well, if uh, the, the last, the, so since we, since I finished post on Danger One, I've put together two new sizzle reels. I didn't shoot those though, so they're just scriptomatics. Those I can now do in like a week, <laughs> you know, just because it's, I have everything, I have sort of a pipeline for these things now. It's just a matter of finding the right footage, but I, yeah, it can be done in a week. The sizzle for Danger One, since it didn't use any borrowed footage, it was all shot. I mean, that's a legit production then. It's, we had to, I mean, yeah, that took probably like two months of prep because you're casting, you're location scouting, um, you know, you're trying not to spend a lot of money, but you're you're putting together a full blown production. I mean, they had a full crew. We had you know trucks. We had um, yeah. I mean, it was like a, a real short from production. So th that's going to take a little longer. But that's where it comes in. H having uh, editing, you know, during the day right. allows you to kind of finance that stuff. I'm just not putting that money in the bank, you know. <laughs> but um, it's you're just reinvesting it. Sure. But so yeah, that, that, that probably overall with post and everything, because we had to do ADR on it, it got color time, that probably took like four months until it was done. But then again, you're not wasting time because the script's still being written simultaneously. Would you be able to tell us how much it cost 
to produce the whole they, sizzle they reel? Got, yeah, they, they got more and more um, expensive. When, you, when you're straight out of school, everyone's so eager. No one has a job, you know. <laughs> everyone's so eager to like be on a set and like make stuff. So the very first sizzle, the one for that teen's conspiracy thriller with Amy Teagarden, we had like a two-day shoot. We had a pretty decent cast. We had a full crew. That I was able to do for, um, I think, $2,000. Wow. Yeah, I know. I, I wish that was still <laughs> the case. Danger one, the sizzle happened a few years later. At that point, everyone has really good jobs. You know, people are shooting, they're, they're um, crewing on tele television shows, they're making a lot of money. So it's like for them to come out, take time off and be on my set, you, you have to pay them something. So the, the, the sizzle for Danger One was just a one day shoot with a smaller cast, but it, uh, it was eventually like $10,000. Wow. And plus, yeah. Nap were you in Napa when you were filming the team? The, no, oh, no, you no. Weren't. we just okay. we cheated that in uh, LA. Okay. But the, okay. the Danger One sizzle, we actually also shot, oh, we shot that not in Vernon, but in, in South LA, that's right. But yeah, for that one day, once, you know, you, once you're paying real, real rates, it's gonna add up, add up quickly. So the sizzle reels are obviously cheaper, that's why those are attractive. Um, and I think now that I've made a film, I don't have to prove so much that I know how to work behind a camera. It's easier for me to just do a sizzle, because I could just be like, yeah guys, I made a movie, check that one out. But before you have a movie, no one knows that you can do it. Um, so, yeah, I think like it was it was ten thousand dollars well well spent. But you're not paying for editing, right? Because you're editing. It? That's right. Ah, yeah. okay. So I would imagine yeah. that cuts the price down a lot. It, it does. Yeah. That's great. And, and you're then paying everyone else. How long are these sizzle reel the the end result of the sizzle reel? Um, if it's just a ripomatic, I kind of stick to. I mean, I make these things really. Those play like an actual trailer, um, so they're they're the length of a trailer. Um, so they're a minute and 40. The thing is like people's attention span in this town, especially if they're producers or executives, is like that. So if it's long, they're just going to tune out. So you, you, you want to cut to the chase real quick. You want to, you know, get to selling your hook within the first like 10, 15 seconds. But the sizzle for Danger One, that was long. So that was, it was I think a little over three minutes. Only because it has a, a short form, it felt it played more like a short film. But in hindsight, um, there's probably a whole bunch of people that did see that and tune out just because they don't have time. If I was shooting one of these again, I'd make it shorter. And usually, when I um, now that when I make sizzle reels and I work with producers on them, their note usually is like, "Yeah, just um, trim out like ten seconds." You know, it's like you want to make these things short. So what's your, what would your advice be to a first time filmmaker on making a sizzle reel? They want to try it, they want to show people that they're serious, they want to show people their talent. They have the original cast that they plan to use attached. Um, what, what are some of your tips? Well, I don't know if you want to have your cast attached and if, because, no? well, it depends on the budget, I guess, but if you're, like with Danger One, where the movie had, you know, our budget wasn't high, but it, it cost, you know, some. You don't want to come in with people attached because the people financing the movie and the producers, they'll have their own ideas. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, even, even in terms of crew and producers, like um, on Danger One, none of my regular guys were working on this movie because the crew was, uh, um, was brought in by the producers. Ah. So you really, uh, all, you, you really just kind of want to sell the story and yourself. Um, but no, I mean, the, the, honestly, the biggest thing is, like I said, just, I mean, stru structure these things the way you would a movie. Like, you don't want your movie, the story in your movie, to get started at the one hour mark. You know, they say, have the inciting incident happen at 20 minutes. So kind of, your trailer, minute and 40 seconds, structure it like that. Just get to the hook quick so people don't turn it off, because they have a million other things to do. Um, and... Um, yeah, and I think, I mean, my, the, the sizzles that I, and that's just, again, because I'm a bit OCD and a perfectionist, <laughs> like they, um, like we made them look like polished. I mean, we went in and really made sure that they, they sound exactly like a real trailer. Sometimes I even had a, a, a composer friend of mine compose music for them. You know, we, we, some of them we mixed professionally, some of them we, um, professionally, these are just calling in favors, people that I met in, in film school. 
um, color time them professional, which is so people are like, wow, this looks good. I want to I want to make a film that looks exactly like that. To be honest, like the sizzle reel for Danger One looks as good as the film itself. Yeah. So do you think the difference between the two thousand dollar sizzle reel that you did for the the Napa Valley teen horror one mm -hmm. and the and Danger One is because you were using people that weren't students that weren't just out of school that were looking for credit or whatever that was the main difference in the price um yeah it was just it's basically how it, it comes down to how far removed are you from film school because a lot of people that worked on that sizzle also worked on the danger one sizzle but it was just four years later mm -hmm. in their careers and uh, you know they, they've got a, a family to feed and, a, and and rent to pay so it's like sure. yeah it'll be easier right out of school but then also like four years in most of us are making more money than, you know, like then the higher budget doesn't hurt quite as much. When I did the $2,000 sizzle reel, that was a lot, you know, because I, I was young and I didn't make a lot of money. So it's not, um, it, it, it costing later down the road is slightly offset by the fact that you are also deeper in your career making more and you're a little, able, you're more able to actually finance some of this stuff. Even on um, like when it comes to like A-list directors on big movies, you always um, you always hear about like how they shoot sizzles. I know that um, which movie was this for? Oh, it was for the they were gonna do a Daredevil remake a couple of years ago, and I think the director of one of the Twilight movies. So that's A-list, right? I mean, he's famous and makes a lot of shoots like Game of Thrones. I think he spent like what was that, like $60,000 on a sizzle that he shot um, just to show what his vision is. So a lot of people are doing that just to show studios and producers what they can do. Um, and like I said, these things, if you want to do it right, it's going to, it can add up. What's the biggest, uh, aside from being your own editor, which I know saves a lot and, uh -huh. and gives you a lot more creative control, uh, what are some other things that could save someone money uh, to make a sizzle reel? Um, Well, I mean, well, yeah, it's, I mean, it's just basically, it's, it's working with, you know, and that's where you're, if you went to film school or you've met people in the industry, if you work in the industry or just your friends. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, once there's not a lot of places at some point where you, where you can save because things just cost as much as they do in this town, you know, I'm trying to think. Um, well, and I guess as an editor, I mean, I, I do my own sound because in, in, especially in reality TV, you kind of have to do your own sound. You don't do it in scripted. Um, you, you sort of make your own music. We don't make it, but you, you're given a music library, so you're cutting music, um, you know, sort of scoring with the elements that you're given. Um, so I'm not just editing picture. As an editor, you don't just edit picture, but you also have a bit of a, you know how to deal with sound. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't know. This, I, I wish it could be done cheaper <laughs> you know, for myself, too. Once your sizzle reel is final and you have it where you want it, what is then your approach to getting it out there, to getting managers and agents to see it? Um, well, back before I had all that, it was really just, um, I mean, I would just send it to my friends from, from film school, you know, because everyone was at a certain stage in their careers and had made their own um, contacts in the industry. And um, in film school, you kind of, you know, you kind of bond in the trenches when you're shooting stuff together. So it's like you, you want to help one another out. So at that point, yeah, I would just send it out to, um, to friends from film school. Once you have managers, they will start sending it out because they can reach uh, past, you know, the gatekeepers at uh, production companies and, and, and studios and stuff but even at that point I would still have my friends send it out because they have producer friends and stuff you, you wanted as many people as possible to see it because people also start talking about it you know like when when the the conspiracy thriller when that sizzle went out um, I was getting emails from people at agencies because they had seen it I had no idea how it how it popped up in those offices but it did because like if something's good you know it'll travel um, and now that um, I've been doing this for 10 years. I mean, even now, I'm, it, it's, these things go to friends. Of, um, there's different producers I work with, so like they send it out, you know. I, I don't think that's ever going to change. I feel like I'm sending it to the same people every time.
What if someone doesn't, what if they didn't go to college and they still have a vision, they're making a film? How could they get it out there and they don't have a huge network of friends? Um, if you, for people that live in LA, for people that live in LA, it's probably a little easier because inevitably you are going to meet people that work in the industry, even if you didn't go to film school. Um, if you live elsewhere, I honestly don't know. I mean, just because I've never lived elsewhere outside of LA, I don't know how to, well, I mean, I guess it's easier now because you, um, there's social media, um, you, you can put it on YouTube. I mean, there's, you know, you, you read about stories of people getting their, you know, they shot a, a trailer somewhere and then someone in LA saw it. I think the, the um, what's his name? The director who did the latest Spider-Man movie. Fede Alvarez or no? Uh, he, did, uh, he did Cop Car, but before Cop Car, oh, yes. he did a movie called, uh, I think it was Clown. It was a horror film. And that horror film started because, and he's not from LA, he, he shot. Colorado, I think. Yeah. I think so, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he, he just shot a fake trailer um, and somehow for, for a clown horror movie and somehow Eli Roth saw that and then he executive produced the feature film for that. So, and I don't know how Roth saw it, but I mean, that's, a, that's something that just kind of went, went viral, you know? Um, I don't know how you make something go viral, but if it's, if it's good, you know, <laughs> it, it, I guess that just happens. That's the million dollar question, yeah. yeah but I mean, I think it's easier now than it was 10 years ago, just because the world's become so small, you know, if you put it out there, someone will see it.